I would first like to thank the organizers and uh, especially Dr. Agarwal for having me here today. And I am also uh, extremely grateful that um, it has been recognized that DEXA interpretation in children is different and difficult as I will, I will show you as we go along. So my outline would be, I'll talk a little bit about the DEXA which is dual energy X-ray optometry, which we use for, which is the gold standard for measuring bone density, the parameters that we assess in children, why we measure bone density in children, why is children's texts are interpreted differently, a couple of, a few case studies and a summary. So uh, I'll just give you, a, uh, tell you a couple of things about the DEXA. So it is called a dual energy X-ray optometry. So there are two X-ray sources, one high energy and one low energy and the attenuation is actually picked up and that is how the bone density is decided. The reason I included this slide is just to tell you that the radiation is very, very minimal. So there is no risk of doing DEXA in a child. You get much less radiation on a DEXA than you would in uh, uh, when you're outside on the road. Um, another thing I'd like to point out that DEXA machines are not like x-rays or, you know, biochemical tests where you can compare one with the other, uh, where you can compare the results just one with the other. So you need to consider, so the most common makes that are found in India is this one is a Hologic machine and this one is our own GE Luna Ride X. So uh, you need to consider the make of the machine, you need to consider the X-ray source, and you need to consider the reference data. Most of these have different background data. So the Z-scores or T-scores that will be computed will actually be different. So the difference that you might find in two reports from two machines of the same patient may not be because there is something different in the patient. It may just be because of the machine. Now, moving on to DEXA scans in children for diagnosis of osteoporosis in children, DEXA scans need to be performed on a machine with pediatric software. Many times I get sent random scans to analyze and, you know, you can't analyze the scan because it has not been done on a children's, um, there is no children's software on the machine on which it has been done. Like for other parameters in children, you need to use Z scores. I'll come to that again. A few things that we do not use in children is... T-scores which you commonly see in an adult DEXA scan are not seen in children, not used in children. The reason is that T-score is comparison with a, a healthy adult who is from 21 to 30 years of age. Since children are much younger than 21, obviously you can't use a T-score. You can't use a peripheral DEXA in children, the little ones that are often available at orthopedic surgeons. And you cannot use the word osteopenia. Osteopenia is not used in children. I'll come to that as I go a bit further. Now, what are the parameters that we normally assess in children? So, of course, the lumbar spine, as we all know, it has a lot of trabecular bones. So, it is, it is metabolically very active. Also, in particularly in secondary osteoporosis, asymptomatic fractures are quite common in, uh, at the lumbar spine. And uh, when you're giving bone active agents, this is a good site to monitor. Uh, we also, uh, of course, do dual, energy, uh, dual femur scans. Now, the dual femur scans are done in children over 10 years of age because under 10 years, positioning the child is very hard and interpreting the DEXA scan is difficult. One scan that we do in children, which we do not very much do in adults for bone density, is a total body scan. Now, you can see one skeleton-like structure on this side. Children get quite excited seeing that. And uh, the other one is this one. So, when you do a total body, you get a total body bone density and you get a total body body composition. Now, the reason why we do this scan is that apart from seeing fracture sites, in children, you are also interested to know how much bone a child has put in. Um, I'll come to that a little bit later again. Now, another scan which has recently been introduced is a vertebral fracture assessment. I must admit that it is something that we really like doing. So the VFA actually will give you an assessment of the whole spine, starting at the cervical spine, going down to the sacrum. Of course, we never see fractures of the sacrum unless it's a road traffic accident or something. And here we are able to tell, particularly in cases of secondary osteoporosis, if there is some vertebra which is affected. Here, as you can see, the L2 is affected. Normally, you should see them as rectangles. 
So why do you measure bone density in children? I I remember when I started work in bone in children in around 2000 or some one or two I was told osteoporosis doesn't happen in children why am I studying it? So um you know on an x-ray to find out that there is osteoporosis at least 30% of the bone has to be lost. Second thing is together with you know the increasing uh, medical arsenal of medications secondary osteoporosis has become quite common asymptomatic vertebral fractures are quite common in secondary osteoporosis and you won't believe happen in around 30% of children and if you want to follow up with bone active agents uh, you have to actually do a dexa scan that's the only way you can see it uh, this is the slide that i referred to earlier that the reason why we are interested in a total body scan in children is to see you can see that this is how the bone growth and the bone loss occurs to make sure that you have good bone as you grow older you need to put away as much as you can when you are actually growing it's exactly like growth so when height is affected bone is affected so that is why we also do a total body scan to look at bone accrual So, what are the childhood conditions in which we look at osteoporosis? So, primary bone disorders where bone fragility is seen, primary osteoporosis. So, disorders of connective tissue. Uh, the commonest primary bone disorder that we report on is osteogenesis imperfecta, and very rarely severe form, severe forms of Ehlers Danlos. Then, very rarely also idiopathic juvenile osteoporosis. What we see much more commonly. is secondary osteoporosis and this is really something that i would like to stress in my talk today in all chronic conditions in children or many chronic conditions in children there is actually a loss of bone though it is not something that is considered before a fracture occurs so in chronic illnesses like malignancies rheumatological disorders all all disorders of anorexia nervosa cystic fibrosis neuromuscular disorders cerebral palsy endocrine disorders then you know medication such as glucocorticoids is the one that we see most commonly then there is methotrexate etc and in inborn errors of metabolism so secondary osteoporosis is much more common than we think and we in many studies have looked at uh, osteoporosis in chronic conditions in children such as in diabetes then in uh, growth hormone deficiency in thalassemias in certain syndromes such as the rubinson type b which we recently reported and in turner syndrome so in all these conditions there is actually a bone loss and the reasons are one is malnutrition children who are chronically sick don't tend to eat as well there is poor sun exposure we all know how common vitamin d deficiency is chronically sick children are less likely to play physical activity is very very critical for bone to be built up during childhood loss of growth and delayed puberty in in girls estrogens and in boys testosterone during puberty are the ones which will ramp up the deposition of bone and the effect of the disease is self and medication so these are the reasons why secondary osteoporosis is common in chronic pediatric disorders So, how do you diagnose osteoporosis on DEXA in children? So, unlike in adults, where you can actually look at the T score and say this person has osteoporosis, you can't do it in children. The diagnosis of osteoporosis in children and adolescents cannot be made on the basis of densitometric criteria alone. So, you need to have a clinically significant fracture. So. if there is a vertebral fracture and even if the bone mineral density is not low and it is an asymptomatic atraumatic or low trauma fracture you can label it as osteoporosis in the absence of a vertebral compression fracture a bone mineral density of less than minus 2z score plus a clinically significant fracture so what that means is under 10 years of age two fractures and under 19 years of age three fractures to call a child as having osteoporosis then why can't we just classify children why is children's data difficult to interpret that is because children grow 
so we pediatricians are always you know dealing with uh, with different issues because children grow and children grow go into puberty at different times which means that bone density increases at different times so if there is a 13 year old boy who is in very early puberty versus another 13 year old boy who's almost come to the end of his puberty the the second one will have much higher bone density but that doesn't mean the first one has osteoporosis not at all he just has to put away more bone he's still waiting so data need to be compared to pediatric reference data that provide age gender and height specific z scores so it doesn't end there unfortunately uh, according to different machines once again according to the type of the machine according to the make of the machine the z scores change so this was a paper that we wrote actually way back i think it was in 2010 when we had our earlier dexa scanner but we find that uh, the results of our current scanner are actually totally different and so now we are reinvent we are reinventing the wheel so uh, reference data is one of our pet peeves and that is one of the reasons why it is quite difficult to actually uh, interpret dexa in children the other reason as i said is size adjustment so what happens is the dexa though it is called as bone density if you carefully look at the dexa report you will find that it says gram per centimeter square so centimeter square is not actually density it it is just area so it gives you what is called as that aerial bone density so what it means is that a smaller child is reported to have lower bone density than a taller child so it's not really true that a short child always has low bone density but unfortunately that's how the dexa reads it so what do we do about it so we use uh various calculations to actually calculate bone mineral apparent density which is bone density adjusted for size so i won't go into details but for lumbar spine we use a particular formula for the femur we use a particular formula another method that we use is something called um you know is a method called, uh, that was introduced first by a scientist called dr christian molgard and this is a really re this is really something that i use all the time so you look at bones to see whether they are short bones thin bones or light bones so if a child is short then we actually classify the child as having short bones if a child's bone area so the bones are thin for the height then we call them thin bones and if there is less bone mineral content for the total bone area we call them light bones so i mean i think even if i can just impress that you know size adjustment has to be done that is enough here so if you look at a dexa scan and you look at you know the end of the dexa scan if you look at the report you can actually see that uh, you can uh, at the end you can see you can diagnose short bones low bone density and thin bones also there is one more parameter which will tell you whether there is amount of bone for the muscle is adequate or not so this is another very important parameter so the thing is though that do we all always look at bones um muscle is a very very important consideration so those children i mean especially like today you know so many children have turned into couch couch potatoes sedentary lifestyle is so common now so if a child doesn't actually put power or force on his bones then if the if the bones are not stimulated they actually do not uh get mineralized and the stimulation of the bones is done by the muscles so strong muscles will give you strong bones so i mean i cannot emphasize that i mean strongly enough so this is critical for actually differentiating primary muscle from primary bone disorder so as you can imagine in duchenne's muscular dystrophy the bones are weak but it is up to us to decide whether the muscles are weak or the bones are weak so i'll quickly take you through a few case studies So this is an adolescent boy who presented with severe pain when a friend fell on him. He's about twelve point five years old. X-ray spine showed a fracture. So child had past history of leg fracture without any trauma at the age of one. Two fractures of radius following trauma at three and nine years. 
Mum had multiple fractures during childhood. Aunt and cousin also had fractures. So actually the diagnosis is staring us in the eye. But just to take you through the DEXA interpretations. So 12.5 year old boy, minus 2.6 Z score, anything minus two, meaning he's short. His adjusted spinal bone density is minus 2.03, which means it is low. If you look at femoral density, it is minus 3.9. So it is quite low. Are bones short for age? Yes. Are bones um, narrow for height? No, because this is not under minus two. And are, are bones under mineralized? Yes, this is under minus two. Is there enough bone for muscle? No, this is minus 3.3. So this child had primary osteoporosis, was diagnosed as osteogenesis imperfecta, and then was treated with bone active agents. A four-year-old girl presented. So these are all cases who have come to us with a history of fracture of forearm with a minor trauma, on examination, she was short, height was 77.8. You can see she's really, really tiny, minus 5.2. Uh, Z score is minus 5.2. Referred to our center for a DEXA scan to rule out osteoporosis. Because she was such a little person, only four years old, we did not do the femur. The spinal BMAD or the adjusted bone density was minus 2.5. Her bones were short. She was a short child. Not particularly narrow bones, though almost getting there, under mineralized bones, and there wasn't enough bone for muscle. But with only one fracture, we can't categorize this child as having osteoporosis. So, no, she doesn't have osteoporosis. Being an endocrine center, we did her bone age, which was only 1.6 years. I'll just remind you, she was a four year old. Her peak stimulated growth hormone was 0.9. IGF-1 was 36 nanogram per ml, which was really, really low. Diagnosed to have growth hormone deficiency and she had no further fractures. So this child was actually picked up by a DEXA technician. She called me and said, Madam, she has growth hormone deficiency. Do you want me to do a DEXA scan? Uh, children with thalassemia, a child with thalassemia came with backache and we did a VFA and we found that L2 was actually affected and we have... We have uh, published a case series on over 250 children where we found, I think, almost 10% had uh, fractures of the spine. So that is why I keep, I keep referring to secondary osteoporosis. So this is what is there in this child. We see many cases of cerebral palsy and children come to us and actually children come with fractures. But one of the problems with children with cerebral palsy and doing their DEXA is that you can't position the child properly and the DEXA is very, very position dependent. This was another child who came with uh, steroid-induced cortico uh, osteoporosis and post-treatment did much better. So what are the limitations of a DEXA scan? So uh, doing scans or diagnosing bone density or weak bones in very young children is very difficult. Often we have very young babies who are sent to us and it is very difficult to, you know, they have so much little chub that it is very difficult to understand what the bones are like in very small babies. Also, under two years, there's practically no reference data. So whoever says that can we send a baby less than 10, two years old? We generally say no. Size adjustment is, uh, a specialist is required for interpretation, though it's not that difficult. Measurements need to be repeated preferably on the same machine. On a DEXA, you cannot differentiate between trabecular and cortical bone score. Those of you who deal with adult bones will know of the trabecular bone score, which has now been bought up by G. Lunar, but it doesn't work very well in children. We've done a study on that and published, but it doesn't work. And presence of contractures and other conditions where the patient cannot be positioned. Sometimes children cry so much. It is very difficult to do a DEXA scan. And of course, our pet peeve, lack of reference data. So we have actually started using a machine called a PQCT, a peripheral quantitative computed tomography machine, which actually differentiates between the cortical and the trabecular bone. And um, it has been giving us lots of very interesting results in chronic disease states. It also talks a lot about the muscle density, about the quality of the muscle, the fat infiltration of the muscle, and we are really enjoying working with the PQCT. So to summarize, DEX is the gold standard for measuring bone density, Reports given by different machines are different. T-scores are not used in children. We use Z-scores and the ISCD guidelines. Diagnosis of osteoporosis cannot be made in a child with a significant fracture. You may just be looking at a child who's still not gone into puberty, who's still waiting to mineralize. 
while interpreting DEXA in children, age, height, gender, pubertal status, and ethnicity need to be considered. Indian children's bones are different than Western children's bones. While, so, while evalu evaluating a child with osteoporosis, it is critical to differentiate the primary from the secondary osteoporosis because in secondary osteoporosis, apart from dealing with the secondary osteoporosis, you have to treat the primary condition. Many chronic childhood disorders affect bones. So please, please keep secondary osteoporosis in mind when you are looking at a chronic childhood disorder. Asymptomatic vertebral fractures are under-recognized and a high index of suspicion is necessary to actually diagnose a vertebral fracture. This is our bone and muscle facility at Pune. This is our GE lunar IDEXA. This is our PQCT. And this is a machine called a jumping magnography, which we measure, uh, which we use to measure objective muscle function. And we have a similar uh, setup at our rural center in Ranzangao, where we are doing rural health studies. And these are some of our publications in the area of bone in the last few years. And thank you.